Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the E major prelude, uh, box E major prelude to be specific. And we're gonna dive into the fingerings uh, since this piece sounds so good on the mandolin. Uh, we're gonna take a look at those fingerings, uh, tell you where I got the inspiration for the fingerings, which is, is Chris Lee. Uh, and there's a few differences that I do uh, from Chris, but for the most part, it's pretty similar to what he does uh, because a lot of those fingerings make sense. And if you need the sheet music or the tab, you can download that on my Patreon. Just go to the description down below and you can download it. And yeah, let's get started. So right there, measure three is, is a really tricky one. Um, instead of using the pads of our fingertips to press down, we really want to be using almost the tips of our fingers. Uh, having calluses does help because these calluses uh, can be pushed flat and have a bigger surface area. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but my fingertips a little bit flat from those calluses. Uh, so we want to be using the tip more than the pad because the pad at the very end of this If we use our pad and we want to hit this open E string, this is uh, measure four, we hit an E down on the D string and then we want to hit an open E string. With, if we use our pad, it's very hard to, to make that happen. Uh, but on our fingertips, it's really easy to do. So and it repeats. So one thing you want to do here too, uh, I didn't play that entirely cleanly, but you get the idea. Uh, we want to put our fingers down and leave them there uh, when we're going up the D string. Because what happens once we get to the seventh fret, we're coming right back down that scale. So instead of doing this and lifting your fingers up, because it gets hard to, to maneuver all of that together when the song gets a little bit faster, just keep those fingers down. All right, moving on. Now we go up the E major scale. No, that's not right. Let me play it again from measure seven onwards. So with this phrase, the trick is we have to go from this E all the way up to this E. And we use we need to use an open string to be able to shift our hand from down here all the way to up here. And that happens on measure eight, at the beginning of measure eight. We hit an open E that allows us to shift our hand at that moment. So we can play that next measure up here. And moving on at measure nine, So nothing too tricky there. It's just getting the pinky to work together with that ring finger on a couple of those hits. Uh, but let's just practice. That's just uh, doing that over and over again. Uh, all right, so we left off uh, at measure 13. Uh, this is when we get into the, some droney stuff. Uh, so we just got done playing this. is important that on that last measure here, on measure 16, that we end with our middle finger on that ninth fret of the A string so that we can shift up and play measure 17 onwards. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit easier for us to do that. Measure 16 sounds like this. 
So right there is our, our nine with our middle finger. And slide that ring, uh, sorry, that middle finger up to play that 11th fret. This is measure 17. So we want to play that shape with our middle finger and our pinky. And this is all alternating picking, so we're starting on a downbeat, uh, starting on a downstroke, and then doing an upstroke and repeating that pattern. Uh, it's a tricky, this is a tricky passage to get down. But it's important that we get it down because it repeats itself later on, just in a different key. Uh, so... All we have to do is go from our pinky to our ring finger. And again, all we have to do is shift our ring finger down. So these are, uh, this is those three measures right there again. This movement from measure 19 to 20 is really tricky because uh, we got to go from here and then shift our ring finger down again and put our pinky down on that 12th fret. So we have to go from here to here. So you could just sit here and practice switching back and forth like this. Uh, you can also do this. And then you can speed that up. and work your speed up from there. So we've shifted our, our hand, uh, I think that's measure 20. It's really easy to get lost. So practice slow. I even might have got lost there. Uh, so that part's just, you have to sit there and practice it. Uh, one good way to think about it is we have uh, either we have our D string movement or we have our A string movement. So either the D string is moving down or the uh, A string is moving down. Uh, so just be aware of that. That's a, that's a difficult part of the passage, but it does repeat itself, so it's good to practice that a bunch. All right, measure 29 sounds like this. So measure 29, we can use our pad instead of our fingertips because we don't have to hit an open E string at any time. So I've seen Thiele play measure 30 uh, with his pinky before, but I think nowadays he's playing it with open strings. And then moving on. Okay, so again, 29 to 31 sounds like this. Okay, and then moving on after that, this is measure 32. So again. Uh, Thiele plays the, the sixth fret stuff on D and e, uh, G string with his pinky, so he does this. Either way is fine. Uh, this stretch for me, it's not a big deal. I'm sure it's not a big deal for him, but just hitting that pinky might be more comfortable. Um, so 
This next little bit from 32 to 33 is also tricky. There's a lot of tricky parts in this. I'll be saying that a bunch. Uh, but we need to get from here with our ring finger to playing this position. So to do that, we have to shift uh, from our ring finger to our index finger in the course of a 16th note. And that's, that's tricky. Uh, one thing you can do is uh, make that note last a little bit longer. That shift can, can, it doesn't need to be exactly a 16th note. It can be slightly longer so you can shift your hand position. You don't want to ruin the rhythm of the song, but you also need to be able to shift up there and get comfortable. So, like it could be a new start to a phrase. So it's like, that's exaggerated. Uh, don't mind, I sound like Chick Corea trying to sing one of his solos. <laughs> um, uh, don't exaggerate it too much. You don't want to lose the rhythm eh, of the song, but a little bit of a pause there is not going to hurt you. All right, so measure 33, we end up here. Great. That one's tricky. Uh, my advice for measure 34 is to practice it a bunch, number one. Number two, Keep that ring finger down the whole time because what's what that's gonna help you do is it's gonna be kind of your anchor point. It's gonna let you know where your hand should be. So you could even leave your index finger down as well. So really you're just shifting with your pinky, which is difficult to do. Uh, moving on to measure 35. So I'm going to play those three measures again from measure 33 to 35. It's going to sound like this. And actually, I'm going to go from 32 to uh, 33 just so you can see how those measures work, how I shift my hand. time faster. Measure 36. Uh, we end up with our ring finger here uh, and we need to play that fourth fret E string with our index finger. Uh, let me play that again. So a tricky thing here, uh, two things, is when we hit that second fret, we have to shift with our index finger down to hit that uh, first fret on the E string. So and then coming up here, we have a fifth. Fifths are really hard. Uh, fifths are really hard to play, uh, but Bach does them often, so we have to get used to them. So we're going to use our ring finger on the E string and then our middle finger. Uh, middle finger on the A string. And we have, uh, I play this different than Thiele on measure 37. Uh, I play it like this. Really the only difference there is that, uh, is this. I think Thiele uses, uses just his middle finger. And I'm using my ring finger, then middle finger. So instead of this, Thiele's doing. Either way works fine, uh, whichever works best for you. And again, another fifth. We need to be able to reach down ninth fret of the G string. So I'll play from measure 37 to 38. Actually, I'll go before that. I'll go 36 to 38. So tricky part there, end of 38. It's 
playing those fifths instead of playing it. You can play it uh, with your index finger and your middle finger. Uh, I find that a bit tight of a squeeze, especially when the song's going fast. It's not going to work too well. Uh, I just roll my index finger down and sort of play more on the pad than the fingertip. So looking at that. So I just roll it over. And then the next part, we have to shift our index finger down. So shifting from 38 to 39, just move that finger down, the index finger. Uh, you can play an open E there at the very end of 39 if you if you want. Another thing that Thiele does uh, that's interesting is he does pull-offs on the first one, uh, the first two notes of this. So there's one right there, there's one right here coming up. I don't know if he does it right here. Uh, pulling off on the D string is a lot harder than pulling off on the E string. Uh, but just, you could do either or. Uh, and a really tricky thing, uh, I'll play this again so you can see, but 41 at the uh, at the part where instead of, uh, it's this is halfway through, after this we have to play, but instead of doing that, instead of Staying on our uh, on the last A note on the D string, that seventh fret, instead of staying on our ring finger and trying to hit the eight nine of the G string with our pinky, we're gonna play this and then shift with our middle finger uh, from that sixth fret to the seventh fret on the D string at the at the end of this little uh, yeah. This is really tricky. I get lost on this one sometimes. So that we can play that eighth and ninth fret on the G string with our ring and pinky, and the middle finger hits that sixth fret. So uh, that whole measure looks like this. And that sets us up for this. So keep those fingers down. Uh, my, my ring, uh, index finger is staying down the whole time since we have this drone note, uh, but I'm keeping down. I'm mostly keeping that middle finger down the whole time. So I'm gonna go from measure 39 to 42, uh, just so you can see that. So these chords, index finger hits the first fret G string, ring, pinky. And that leaves open that middle finger to hit the third fret. We go from pinky to that uh, middle finger, it looks like this. Again. It's really tricky, uh, practice slow. And then you can speed it up. Or you can just practice this back and forth. Uh, then we shift to this, uh, which is sometimes hard to get that E string to ring out right. And then back to this. Maybe. So after you get the first two bars, those repeat, uh, bar 43, 44 repeat on bar 45 and 46. Uh, one thing that you can do too, instead, instead of alternate picking this, uh, you can actually do two downstrokes to start this. Instead of this, you can do Uh, 
All right, that's just a phrasing thing that helps with the phrasing. I think Thiele does alternate picking on this, but uh, the two downstrokes in a row uh, can help the phrasing sometimes if, if you need it. Okay, so moving on to 47, uh, we play this chord. And that repeats itself. Uh, it's a little bit tricky with the ring finger pinky, but that's, I would not play it with, uh, with your ring middle finger. That'd be very difficult to do. Uh, so try it with your pinky and ring finger. And then the dreaded bar 49. Uh, what we have to do is roll our pinky to get those fists. Which is a really tricky thing to do. One thing that you can do to also help is after you play this uh, first fret on the G string, you can lift off. If you can't keep it down, it leaves a nice drone note, but if you can't, you can lift it off to be able to hit that roll. And then bar 50 sounds like so we're using index, ring on that D string, middle. And then Pinky's grabbing that sixth fret. So all together that sounds like this and looks like this. Measure 51 looks like this. So Thiele plays a little bit different on measure 51 than I would. Uh, he does this. And then completes the phrase up here. something like that. Uh, I found something that works a little bit better for me. Uh, it goes like this. One reason Thiele might not have done what I did, uh, there is a big jump from the G to the A string uh, on the start of 52, uh, which might not sound as clean as you'd want it to. Uh, especially when this is up to speed. Uh, when it's slowed down, it sounds fine. Up to speed, though, it's a different story. Uh, but either way works. Uh, it leads us to 53. So I'll play 51 into 53. So you see I went, finished the phrasing on 52, and then leading to 53, I just shifted my index finger down to be able to play this shape. And then I shift my index finger back up to hit uh, the fourth fret G string on mid bar, what is that, 55. So that's pretty self-explanatory if you look at the tab, sheet music, and my fingers. Uh, so 57. So the only 
the hard part there is at the end of measure uh, bar 58, uh, we have to shift our hand position because we're right here. Then we have to hit a second fret uh, along with the drone note that we've been playing the whole time. So we just have to shift from here and then shift our, shift our hand like that. So real time, it looks like this. And that leads us to bar 59. So 59. Right here, I'm going to shift and I'm going to play this next part with my starting on my middle finger. And do the same thing. The reason I do that is because we have to play this figure again. I know we're familiar with this. Uh, we have to do that again. So, bar 67, we have this repeating pattern. Uh, we're in the key of A here. Uh, we're just down a fourth from this, which is what we did earlier in the key of E. Now we're in A. So, that's exactly the same fingering as what we did before. So, I'm going to skip through that part. Uh, just slow practice, uh, follow the exact same fingering that we did earlier, uh, and I'll meet you at bar 79. So 79 looks like this. Might look familiar because it's the same as the other ones. Play that one more time. So bar 82, I play like this. Uh, so, and here I shift my hand position to play that up here. Uh, just keeps it consistent with some of the other parts that we played that are out of the shape and pick position, uh, pick placement. So, 83 onwards. Pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, moving on to 86. Let's go through it slowly. Uh, so it sounds like this. I would actually, instead of playing it with uh, my ring finger, try to play with your middle finger because it makes this shape a little bit easier on measure 89. So measures 88 into 89. One more time. Starting on measure 90. Shift with our ring finger on the start of uh, 91 
to shift our hand position. I'll do that again. One more time. And we do that again at the very end, we shift with our middle finger, the end of, the, uh, of bar 91, so we can play this. So from bar 90 to 92, it looks like this. So one more time, it looks like this. And so now we're on 93. So let's go back to 93. Looks like this. And then Pinky's gonna play that uh, ninth fret A string on bar 95, uh, 94. So it sounds like this. We have a big shift from 9th fret to the 2nd fret. Luckily, we're playing the 9th fret with our pinky, so the shift to our index isn't that bad. Uh, so, it look, uh, so it looks like this, 93 into 94. So right there, fists. Um, I'm, instead of barring the fist, I'm playing the fist with my middle and ring finger, and then shifting the second fret, the first fret, with my index finger. And then... And then this. I like to use my pinky there. Uh, this is bar 96. Instead of, uh, just use your three available fingers after putting down that middle finger. And then fist again, instead of laying my fingers down, I'm playing it with two different fingers. Uh, my middle finger and my ring finger. So oh, bar 96 looks like this. It's a long video, but all right, folks, stick with me. We're almost done. We're, we're getting close. Uh, so moving on, uh, 98. Okay, one more time. We're going to shift that middle finger up to play bar 99. So again... So bar, nine, bar 100 looks like this. It's a little bit tricky there. Uh, I shift, uh, instead of, I, I would usually play, if we're playing this C sharp major arpeggio up, I'd usually be playing with my middle finger to hit that fourth fret on the A string, but instead, I'm using my index finger because we have to keep climbing up. We stay in this position because we got bar 101. So tricky part at the very end. 
uh, that pinky's grabbing those fifths. So, so bar 102 looks like this. So bar 102 to 104 again looks like this. Moving on, 105 looks like this. We've seen this before. Uh, so same fingering, index slides down, two different fingers cover those fifths. We have to shift our hand. We use that open string again to shift our hand. So measure 105 to 106. So that index finger on 106 is shifting from the fourth fret to the second fret of the E string and those fifths are grabbed with two different fingers. Uh, so it sounds like this. Uh, and so 107, we're gonna apply the same thing with the fifths, different fingers, and slide that finger down. Same thing here. So sliding with that middle finger. So 107 looks like this. So 108, you can play this last bit like that. So your pinky's gonna grab that sixth fret or your ring finger can move from that fifth fret and grab it as well. Or and then we got drones, yay. So that's all pretty self-explanatory. The only hard thing is going to be hitting those fists on, uh, what bar is that? Bar 114. So one trick to this, after playing that, uh, is that once you play that last, uh, what is that, the fourth note in, which is the second fret of that A string, to go ahead and put down your fists right there. Uh, so that you don't have to do it later on. So we shift with our index finger on bar 117 on the first, the second and third note. So Thiele at the end plays something uh, that I think I like and I haven't really uh, practiced it enough, uh, but let's check it out. So bar 118 plays that how I would play it. Uh, sorry. And then he shifts his hand down uh, to play those last four notes like this. Because it's really hard to go from this. It's a lot of shifting to play this fifth and then going back up to the fifth in the next measure. Shift, and then shift back. Uh, and we're in a, uh, 119 is an A chord. And then the next measure is a B chord.
So all of that's pretty self-explanatory. It's mostly single line stuff. Uh, you can rewatch the video of what I did right there. Uh, so 128 to the end. We are so incredibly close. So let's take a look at this. So 128. Uh, well, actually, let's back up to 127 because we do an index shift at the end there. So. When we get to bar 129, we have, uh, we have to shift up here from down here. Uh, the way you do that, again, open string. So again, uh, I'll go 128 into 129. So I usually do uh, ring middle because uh, I don't know, it just feels a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more stable for that part, especially near the end of this tune. We're dealing with a little bit of fatigue in the hand, uh, just a little bit easier. And now we have on bar 130, uh, we have a bunch of drones again. So a bunch of drones, just follow that. Uh, try to get that E string to ring as much as, it, as, much as you can. Uh, it's a nice effect on the mandolin. It's just kind of blooming, especially in the key of E. We love it. So we end that those drones, we, we get to a B, uh, measure 134, to an E chord. So bar 135 looks like this. So bar 134 into 135. And then we have the ending, very close. Nothing too tricky there, using open strings to shift. That might be the hardest thing right there. Sitting that fifth and moving that down with our ring finger. This is bar 136. All right, folks. Well, that was a marathon. Uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions about this piece. Uh, hopefully, hopefully one day I'll get a performance up on YouTube of it. Uh, but right now it's in the works. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed that lesson on uh, box prelude in E major. Uh, and I will see you on the flip side. Thanks, everyone.